Hey, you guys, welcome to Samba Tree News. This is something that we're going to be um, incorporating slowly, a little bit over time on this um, platform here. Samba Tree News will be just something that where we will touch on um, news as it pertains to our health, wellness, and even social issues. We'll touch on that as well. But we really want to make sure that we're targeting our health, anything that deals with our health and, and wellness. So welcome to Samba Tree News. So today we're going to um, get into a very interesting topic that has been on my mind for a very long time. And I've been wanting some answers for this thing. And so I think we may be on to something with this one. But first, I want to make sure that you guys are aware of Samba Tree. And, um, and so let me bring you to the site. The website is on your screen. You see right there, it says sambatree.com. And then make sure before you get started, make sure you sign up for the email list there so that you can get, um, you know, get all the latest, you know, uh, news about anytime we're releasing something. Well, what is Samba Tree? Well, I'll tell you very quickly. This is a page that we have, we, my wife and I started um, some time ago. And it's not just a page, it's a store. It's a store where we sell all kinds of wonderful things, you know, um, hitting it right at the top there. We just introduced um, new uh, organic raw chia seeds and um, also not just that. We got everything from um, uh, bitters. We have essential oils. We have um, teas. We have creams, body butters, powders, seasonings. And we're all about 100 percent natural here. All right. Or as close to it as possible, because that's what we deserve. I'm tired of buying stuff in these stores that have things in it that's designed to keep us coming back into the store over and over again. So check us out on Samba Tree. And that's S-A-M-B-A. S-A-M-B-A tree. I had to make sure I was spelling it right. <laughs> Dot com. And then you can also buy in bulk as well. We have everything from um, um, capsules. We have um, um, tea, like I mentioned, teas, oils, all that kind of great stuff there. Uh, even stuff for dental, dental work too. We got things there as well. So again, one more time, the uh, web address is sambatree.com. Go ahead and check that out when you get a chance. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it, what we're going to be talking about in this particular broadcast. Now, I remember, now fortunately, I don't deal with this anymore. Maybe you do, but may, and so maybe this will be a help for you. Um. I, um, when I was growing up, I've never had, I don't recall having any issues with allergies. I don't, I don't, I don't really recall. Maybe sometimes I did. And, but if I did, it wasn't really a big thing and I just didn't know it, you know, at the time. But when I moved, cause I grew up in the Northeast, but then as I got older, I moved to Atlanta. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia and oh my goodness. When I tell you that it was, that was something, you know, because I mean, the pollen there, you can see it. I mean, it was almost like snow on your cars. I mean, that thing, it was laid up there thick. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, it was up there thick and I didn't think it was going to bother me because again, I, I don't recall having any issues with, um, pollen or anything like that, but man, I got a rude awakening there. And I was down there at the time looking for employment and I, it took everything in me to get to the interview, did the interview, was able to secure the job and I was barely making it. I was barely making it. <laughs> and then I um, went back to the house where I was staying and I was knocked out, man. I, I couldn't go anywhere else. I could not. I had driven all that way down to Atlanta. I went to really see the city and all of that. But man, you know, I was taking Benadryl. I was taking all this stuff to, you know, to try to, you know, get me back to some sense of normalcy. But it, it, it was it was hard. It was hard. But anyway, so ever since then, as I, you know, got old, a little bit older and then I got wiser thanks to my wife. <laughs> and, uh, I, um, one of the things, the changes I, I know I made, um, and this was just in just simple reading, just a little bit of reading was that I lowered the amount of sugar that I was taking. When I started feeling those symptoms, the first thing I did was I said, you know, let me cut down on any sugar that I'm taking in, you know, and, um, you know, I loved at that time, really the sugary drinks and things like that. 
So I stopped drinking all that and I noticed the difference. And all of a sudden I felt, you know, I was a little bit more immune to that stuff. I didn't have any problems with it. And um, man, it's been years since then, many years. And I have not had any issues at all when it comes to um, pollen and, uh, you know, or allergy season, like they like to call it. I haven't had any problems. And I thank the most high for that for sure. But anyway, um, but it still exists. It's still an issue out there for many people. And I, you know, as you're in this age of discovery and you're trying to figure out, you know, you're just like, well, wait a minute. Why was this? Why is this all? Has it always been like this? You know, was allergy season always a big thing? You know, even in going into ancient times, did they have an allergy season? Well, if you do a little reading, you will see that there were some groups that would mention it, but it wasn't really a big thing like it is, like you see today. You know, um, they just may have called it different names, but it wasn't really, you know, as big as what you see today. So what that tells me is that something changed. And what was that that change? Well, I came across a video on TikTok and man, this dude, he really laid it down. So I want to play that vi um, video for you because, man, I tell you, it, it really made a whole lot of sense to me. So let me go ahead and get this video for you and let's take a look and then let's see if we have anything else to add to it. it ain't going to be too much, though, I'll tell you right now, because he laid it out. So let's go ahead and get this video up here, and I'll be right back. I always wonder why pollen allergies were such a big deal in America. Growing up in India, we didn't hear much about this, so I dug into it. You see, in early 20th century, American elm trees dominated the North American landscape until a fungal species from the Netherlands hitched a ride across the ocean on backs of elm beetles. In what came to be known as the Dutch elm disease, quickly spread across the states and nearly wiped out these gentle giants. This put America in a frenzy. Scientists grew obsessed with genetically modifying these naturally occurring hermaphrodites to be dioecious, meaning to be either strictly male or female, to prevent unwanted pollination. Now you may ask, how is this related to my allergies? Well, when trees are functioning to their natural abilities, the pollen released by the male stamen are caught by the female stigma. So then blame the 1949 Yearbook of Agriculture by USDA, which stated, when used for street plantings, only male trees should be selected to avoid the nuisance from cottony seeds. This signaled urban planners across the United States to start planting male trees exclusively. This desire for disease resistance Aesthetic appeal and litter-free characteristics of male-only trees worked great initially. But as these trees got mature, they started shedding pollen. Lots of it. Only this time, there were no female stigma to catch it. Botanical sexism, as it was then coined by horticulturist and pollen expert Thomas Hogren, created something that nature had never seen before. An urban pollen explosion that started the epidemic of allergy and asthma. It affects millions of individuals with respiratory and allergy issues across the United States, all because municipalities thought fruit-bearing female trees were too much of a burden. As countries around the world continue to model their urban landscape to American standards, this issue is only going to get worse. And thanks to climate change, winters are getting shorter, which means longer and more severe allergy seasons. So what can we do to fix this? Well, individually, not much. These trees are already out there, alive and healthy. However, researchers and urban planners now agree that planting a healthy mix of male and female trees is the best approach moving forward. So botanical sexism. Have you guys ever heard of that? Well, I mean, it makes a lot of sense on what he said. And before we continue, let me go ahead and make sure that, you know, this is the uh, the gentleman that um, posted that video right there so that you can you know, maybe you can check him out. He's over on um, TikTok and um, that's him right there. So I just want to make sure, you know, he gets credit for that. But but botanical sexism. Wow. Have you never heard of that? But, you know, he he pretty much laid it out there. So it really comes down to what these people, these powers that shouldn't be that we always talk about on this platform. You know what they did is that they pretty much got rid of the female trees that you know by the way that you have male trees and female trees 
Oh, that's quite interesting because again, that's again when we look at creation, <laughs> when we look at nature, you know, we see that's how nature is laid out. You have male and you have female. I mean, it's just as simple as that. And um and it's like these powers that shouldn't be that we're talking about out here, they are so obsessed with um going in and trying to and playing around with stuff playing around with stuff and now look at at the re- at the results of doing this getting rid of the female trees what has happened now you got this pollen all over the place and there's no female trees not enough female trees to catch that pollen so this is why you have all of this pollen all over the place, particularly like in places like I mentioned, like in Georgia. And I'm sure like I've, I've heard, you know, I have people down in Alabama that have told me for years about, you know, the pollen that's down there, you know, pretty much the South. I mean, it's not good. Mississippi is another place. Um, I'm sure Louisiana, you know, it's, whoo, it's, it's pretty bad, but this is what they did. And it also traces, I mean, and it's not just the trees. I mean, think about a lot of these, um, 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 insects that we get, you know, um, I know where we live, we get these lantern flies that just all of a sudden over the year, they just came out of nowhere and they just literally have overtaken, um, you know, at a certain time of the year when they show up, man, they just like, I had one tree, unfortunately I just had to cut down because they use that as a nest. You know, I think it was a, it was a black walnut tree. And soon as that tree starts, you know, just the leaves are just starting to come out. That's when they come out and just cover the tree and the tree every year. It just never has a chance to fully bloom. It's because of these wicked people, man. They have just come in and just, you know, they just like rearranging stuff. And we're seeing that today in mainstream media. You know, you got all these companies backing, you know, this whole agenda that we're seeing that seemed like it just exploded over time and we're going to be talking about that on our uh, uh upcoming broadcast too. we're going to be getting to that because there's some um um anyway i don't want to get into it but yeah we're going to be talking about that but as far as this is concerned i just found that to be quite interesting now like he said what can you do what can you do as an individual in dealing with that well i mentioned i gave you a one solution uh, when you're dealing with, um, your allergies, if you, you know, if you're an allergy sufferer, um, you know, look at your sugar intake. You want to make sure that you're not taking in anything that's going to suppress your immune system. You know, sugar is a biggie, you know, um, that's a biggie. Um, also bread, you know, any kind of bready stuff also, you know, because, you know, that converts into sugar too, you know, you want to lay low on that for a while. Okay. If this is the time of the year where you start feeling a little something, you know, getting that little tickle in your throat or whatever, you know, you definitely want to lay low on that stuff. And then you want to start focusing on things that can help build your immune system. You know, if you've been following this platform, one of the biggies that we talk about is making sure that you get daily exposure to the sun, you know, getting that sunlight. Also, vitamin C is another uh, great thing to um, take in. But pretty much any herb out there that um, is, you know, it's known for um, the building up of your immune system. And, you know, if you're watching this, put in the comments below, what are some of the things that you take to help build your um, immune system and, and talk and share with people the success that you've had with that? You know, because, again, family, we got to be our hospital. We can't depend on this system because this system is designed to get you sick and to keep you sick and to make a grip off of it in the process. So we've been through this for a very long time. It's about time for us to say, you know what, let's stop. You know, and it's great. It's good information like what we just provided here for you. Now you got the understanding of the why, because I know if you're like me, I'm constantly asking this. Why do we got all this pollen all over the place? Was it always like that? Well, now, you know, now that you have the information, what are you going to do? You know, so there are options that you can do. Fortunately, we're not helpless here. You know, there are um, things we can do. Like I said, again, lowering your sugar intake, you know, laying low on that bread, drinking plenty of water, getting sunlight, taking herbs that focus on the building up of your immune system. And there's a whole lot of them out there, family. So check that out when you get a chance. OK, and that way this season, 
you can be much more prepared than just sitting around and just waiting to get sick okay all right so thank you so much for tuning in here at the saba tree news you guys take care and i'll see you again soon take care <laughs>